I actually felt sorry for Anthony way back in the day. She was a nightmare. And I wasn't in a, in a good relationship either. We we both had nightmares, as we were like crushing it at WNEW. We were we were we were with two nightmares. Even when our relationship was going away and we weren't like hanging out anymore, the one thing we bonded on was the fact we were both with nightmares. That's why we opened up our office and turned it into a party after our show because we didn't want to go home. I remember, <laughs> like I said, the good, the bad, the ugly. I like that theme because I think, I think I focus way too much on the ugly, and uh, and that's not fair because the ONA show was so much, so much. So I'm trying to bring more of the good when I I talk about uh, Opie and Anthony. Me and Anthony would take turns driving from Huntington, Long Island. We lived very close to each other in Huntington. Both had apartments. We're crushing it for any W, and we still don't have we still don't own anything. All of a sudden, my, my girl, at the top, you're going to work already? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. am. But you don't start till three. Yeah, I know. And I would leave the house at like nine and pick up Anthony. We couldn't wait to get the fuck into the city. And then uh, we'd hang out in the office. Then we'd do our show. And then we'd go back to the office. And we had a Jägermeister machine. We had, I, I think near the end, we had three fridges in our office. And then after the show ended, we'd just stay in the office. And then finally we'd go home, you know, and we take turns just because that commute killed us. It was brutal. That's the only reason why I live in the city. That commute killed me when we were still getting along and we were driving, taking turns driving. Uh, I remember a day. I don't remember how many times this happened, but we would we would giggle like idiots because we'd get back to Huntington. We we're in horrendous traffic. We're fucking rock stars in the radio world. <laughs> And all of a sudden, I would pull up uh, to Anthony's house, and he goes, dude, can you drive around a little bit? <laughs> and I didn't want to go to my house either. So I remember we would make loops just in Huntington, down Main Street, and up and around, and I'd pass his house, nah, nah, another loop. And then we'd giggle like idiots, how lame and pathetic it was. And I think we I think we even were like talking like if the fans only knew that our personal lives suck. And then uh and then there I'll I'll leave you with this. And then there was a I forgot about this story. And then there was a time it was my turn to drop him off again. And I pull up to his house and the candles were on. You could see candles were lit. He's like, oh my God, no. Because I guess candles meant like, you can only imagine. And he's like, oh, fuck. The candles are lit. <laughs> can you? Yes, we can, Anthony. We... Yes, we can take a loop. We can take a loop. I never forgot that one. Oh, the candles are lit. And he didn't have to tell me anymore. And I'm just like, oh, I feel so sorry for this guy. He made me forget about how how my relationship wasn't much better. Oh, the candles are lit. <laughs> can you? Yes. Yes, we can. Oh, God. So there you go. There's a good memory. I'll try to I'll try to come up with more good memories. I really will. Because I, I know I focus way too much on the uh, the ugly. <laughs> oh, the candles are lit. <laughs> That's all he said. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> John, you got it. It was it was delivered perfectly because it came from such a real place deep in his soul. Oh, the candles are lit. <laughs> I, w I wish I got to hang with that guy a little more. It's, it really sucks that everything got all all sorts of fucked up over the years. Because just dumb things like that were just so special. Oh God. All right. I'm out.